31. So 26 to 39 will be coded as 1, while 31 to 35 will be coded as 2, and then 36 and above will be coded as 3. So once you see 36 and above, we have code 3. And then this guy is code 2, and this is also code 2. Then when you come to experience, we apply the same principle, okay? So which means less than one year will be code one. One to three years will be two. And then above three years will be three. We have, that is the experience. Then we do same for educational level, okay? So for edu level, we have the, uh, we started with um, okay of course we should have defined the categories okay so we could say that um, uh, somebody has to get a degree degree should be the minimum so maybe degree is going to be one and the masters will be what will be two okay for these three head teachers. So basically, we can see that clearly now it looks like a numeric data, okay? Uh -huh, which you, you would easily accept as data. But in actual fact, this is the coded form of the data. So this is the real data itself, okay? This is the real data itself. And you can see that there are different types of data. Some are in numeric, has numbers. Uh, these are numeric, 36, 33. Then some are non-numeric, okay? Degree is not a numeric data. It is non-numeric data. So what we are saying here is, the data we obtain depends on the type of variable we are dealing with, okay? so. Age is a numeric variable. Experience is a numeric variable. When I ask you your age, I'm expecting numeric data or numeric response. So age by itself is numeric in nature. Okay? And then experience is also what? Numeric in nature. So experience measured in terms of the time of stay in that position is numeric data, whilst educational level is non-numeric, okay? So that helps us to classify the types of variables into two main types, which are the quantitative and the qualitative data. So we have two main types of data sets These are the quantitative and the qualitative data. So variables are classified as what? Quantitative or qualitative. Okay, good. Now, we want to look at examples of quantitative data. Quantitative data, like we said, are, are have numeric what? Measures, uh, have numeric measures or numeric response, okay? Good. Whilst qualitative data has what? Non-numeric response, okay? So they are non-numeric in nature. Very good. Okay. So proceeding from there, we want to look at examples more examples of qualitative and qualitative and quantitative, sorry, qualitative and quantitative variables. Okay. Yeah. 
Yeah, so I have I have a data set here where we're looking at a number of variables with responses provided to them for three for three observations. So we have gender, we have price of shoe, we have nationality, we have number of children, we have weights and rank. Now, can you help me to distinguish between this type of variables? So this is why I need you to come in. So help me to distinguish the type of variables. What kind of variable is gender? Understand? Yes. Yes. Uh, gender is uh, qualitative. Yes, gender is qualitative. Good. Price of shoe, Ahmed. I'm a price of shoe. Yes. Uh, price of shoe is uh, quantitative. Good. That means it's numerical. Yes, you are correct. Becky, nationality. It's qualitative. Qualitative. You are very correct. Yes. Right. Number of children. That is quantitative, sir. Quantitative. You are right. Weights, Daniel, weight. Um, it's quantitative and it's uh, numeric. You are correct. And then rank. Yes, rank. Rank would be, quali uh, rank would be qualitative. Qualitative, you are very right. Sir. Very good, so we got it right. Now there is another distinguishing feature we need to look at. When it comes to, we are looking at a quantitative type of data. So these three types. When it comes to this type of data, you can clearly see that whereas some are in whole numbers, you see these data sets are in whole numbers. These ones are in decimals. Okay, good. Now, if I ask you for the difference, you tell me because one is in whole numbers and the other is in decimals, no. It's because of another classification or the way we obtain the response or the, the data for these variables. Uh, for example, when I ask you for the number of children, all you need to do is to count. So you count discrete figures, one, two, three, four. But if I ask you to give me your weight, you will have to measure and measurement is based on the level of accuracy of the scale you are going to use. So if the scale is to first decimal place, then you read your, your results to first decimal place. But if you reach to four decimal places, then you give me your results in what? Four decimal places, okay? Which is not the same as what? The response for number of children. Uh, you cannot ask for number of children and somebody tells you one and a half, okay? That only happens in statistics class where one of my students said the one and a half, half will mean uh, Aki and Popo. <laughs> <laughs> then uh, when it comes to price of shoe too, we have clear pricing, okay? Clear cap pricing. So it's either one CD, two CD, I mean, once it tapers well, something like that, okay? It is very clear. So it tells us that even under quantitative variables, there are different types. There are ones that we count and ones that we measure, okay? Now, counting quantitative variables are referred to as discrete quantitative variables. And then those that are measured are referred to as 
continuous quantitative variables. So let's go to our diagram and then see some more examples. So when you come here, you can see we have quant under quantitative, we have continuous and discrete. So discrete, we have number of cars, number of children. Okay, good. Then when it comes to continuous, we're looking at heights, we're looking at weights. Okay, there are more. Mm -hmm. But the key thing you have to know is continuous quantitative variables are measured. Okay, whilst this con discrete quantitative variables are counted. Good. Now let's also go to the qualitative variables or what we call as categorical variables and look at the differences in the for qualitative variables, we have two types. We have types like nationality and rank. There are differences in here. Okay? Good. Now, what are the differences? When it comes to nationality, we have Ghanaian, Chinese, Nigerian. You cannot classify a Chinese as being more important than Nigerian or Nigerian being more important than Ghanaian, okay? We are all human, so there is no distinguishing differences in there. The same way when we come to gender, you cannot say male is higher than female or female is higher than male, okay? So nationality and gender appear to, be, to belong to one class. But on the other hand, when you go to rankings, you get to the police officer, you go calling him what? A corporal instead of a sergeant or a sergeant instead of a private, uh, okay? Then there are going to be issues because they are not the same. Mm -hmm. You need to go through a number of protocols and a number of uh, tax before you move from one rank to the other. Okay? The same with our teaching profession. You start off as an assistant lecturer to a lecturer to a senior lecturer to associate professor to a professor. Okay? So you can meet an associate professor and refer to him as a lecturer. You can't do that. That will be suicidal, okay, if you are in academia, right? So there are clerical ranks. Rankings are always in some order. Huh? They are in order. But nationality and gender are not in those kind of ordering. Very well. So that said, let's go back to our flow chart and then see. So what we're saying in summary is qualitative variables or categorical variables can also be classified as what? Nominal or ordinal. Nominal are those ones without order. Uh, nominal means no order. No order. So example will be what? Will be color, will be gender, will be nationality. So you cannot say that because your favorite color is, is uh, black, black is nicer than white, or white is nicer than black, or red is nicer than violet or purple, you can say that. Okay, good. Whereas when it comes to ordinal variables, we have ranks. There you cannot miss the rank. You need to arrange them in order. You cannot miss them, okay? So in qualitative categorical variables, ordinal ranking, okay, is, is very nice. In ordinal ranking, it's necessary you always arrange, okay, from one rank to the other. 
Now, let me touch a little bit on that aspect as well. Even in ranking, there are two ordinal ranking, there are two types of ordinal ranking. We can have what we call as clear rank ordinals, and then we can have what we refer to as level ordinal. Okay. Whereas rank ordinals, like I explained, for example, the rank of a lecturer will move from associate to lecturer to senior lecturer and that. And for that matter, you cannot go saying that a senior lecturer is, a, a, is an associate lecturer because assistant lecturer because you think he looks young or she looks young. You can do that. Okay, because before you you move from the rank of a senior lecturer to a senior lecturer, you have a lot of work, a lot of rigorous uh, search, rigorous processes you go through together. Then when it comes to level ordinal, I will cite an example and you understand. If I ask you for your preference of chocolates on a scale of one to five, Let's do a simple activity. But before we do that activity, one limitation with the Zoom is after 45 minutes, uh, the system will automatically log me off. So let's continue with our activity. On a scale of one to five, uh, Rafti, I want yes, to do a template. So I'll go for three. We'll go for three. Becky? Mm -hmm. Five. For five, yes. Becky, if you have said anything lower than that, I'll have my own <laughs> comment to make. <laughs> I think I lost track, Jose. Yes, rate your preference for chocolate on a scale of one to five. <laughs> Osman. Yeah. I said rate your preference. I'll go for one. You go for one. Good. Yes, sir. <laughs> um bright. I'll go for two. Go for two. Daniel. Yeah, I'll go for one. You go for one. Yeah. Very well. On that note, I'm going to ask a further question. Good. So, <laughs> within a month's time, or let me say within a period of one month, how many chocolates do you take? So, the first person, the first person was Grafty. Yes. Zero. You take hey. zero. <laughs> no chocolate. What do you say? That's a, yes. No chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> Becky, three. How, many? three. how many chocolates within a month? Yes. How many? Three? Yes, please. Three. Okay. Um, who is the next person? Osman. Osman, it's your turn. Okay, let's take the next person. I think Bright is two. Zero. Bright, zero. And uh, Daniel. Daniel. Chocolates a month. Whereas the person who said one also takes three chocolates a month. And the, the person who said three takes zero chocolates a month. So
So you can see that this rating, even though they are still ratings, are based on perceptions. Okay? They are ratings based on what? Perceptions. perceptions. Yeah. So they are sometimes relevant, okay, but not always true as they seem to be. Okay? So level ordinal are also ordinal, but they do not have clear cuts intervals between them because the person is saying five, okay, probably is saying five uh, because we are getting close to Valentine, okay? <laughs> yes, <laughs> might be saying five because we are getting close to Valentine. The next time you ask him in uh, in March or in April, she will tell you, no, my choice is not five, it's rather three. <laughs> So that is how the level ordinal scale also works. Okay, any questions so far? Uh, so far, we, we are cool. Yeah, very class, well. Question. Okay, so this gives us the types of variable. Mass 202 class, any question? Any question, class? Summer class, any question? No question. No, no sir. Okay. I hope you are enjoying the, the previous lecture. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. OK, good. Let's continue. Let me summarize it again. We have two main types of variables. We have quantitative, we have qualitative. But under quantitative, we have continuous and discrete. Under qualitative, we have nominal and ordinal qualitative. Then even yes. for the ordinal, yes, right. we have ranks and levels. Okay, Level. we have ranks and levels. So, then let's also summarize the fact yeah, Ojo, do you have a question? Of measuring or obtaining the data. So when it comes to this great quantitative, we count, okay? So discrete quantitative, we count. Whereas when we go to continuous quantitative, we measure. And when it comes to nomina, like gender, okay? If you want gender, you only have to sort between males and females, okay? So nomina, we yeah. And then when it comes to ordinal variable, we order them, okay? So this is ordinal level, okay? We order them. Very good. Then don't also forget the coding, okay? So coding, you always take from the least to the highest. So if, aha, uh -huh, then in terms of the nominal, where there is no order, uh, so if you have gender, gender and we have uh, male and female okay let me better so go to back to the table so for gender we can assign zero to female and one to male or assign zero to male and one to fem female so we can say that male is zero so instead of putting zero in the table a male in the table you put zero one one uh, male. Uh -huh. Then you inform the computer that zero means male. It doesn't mean that female is higher than male. Okay. That is how we do the coding. Very well. Now we we're moving on to our next topic. Before we do that, make sure you have your scientific calculators by you. 
okay, we are looking at frequency distribution tables. So try and get access to your scientific calculators. Whilst I do a very simple demonstration on just what we've just learned to you. Okay. So I want to my SPSS well, I'm going to type numeric values, but I need to tell the computer the input is what? It's a nominal input, okay? Good, and also tell the computer that I have what? Zero as male and one as what? As female, okay? Good, so I add and then click okay. Now when I come here, I'm going to input data for five people. So I have zero, one, 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 zero, zero. Okay. So seeing this data with the definitions I have inputted, right? Once I click on this label values, you can see that the numbers have changed back to the actual data I picked from them into male and female, okay? Which means that the computer recognizes that these values are not numeric, they are nominal. They are nominal and they are qualitative. So even though you do zero and one, but they are nominal and qualitative. Okay. So now let's go on to topic two. If you have any questions. Okay. So you are not going to topic two, which is frequency distribution. Your topic two is going to be measures of central tendency, and measures of variation, okay? So we are done with um, today's topic, which is uh, looking at data and um, the type of variables. Okay, any question on what we have looked at so far today? Class, any questions so far? Okay. Yes, Ojo. No, no question. No question. Okay. It, it appears the video has speeded everything up for us. So we are done with the question, the, the topic. We now know how data come about. We know the various type of data and how to classify and also how to code them for further analysis. Okay. Very good. Now, um, Okay, so let's, since we have time, let's quickly look at uh, an aspect of uh, the next class, okay? We're actually supposed to do that for next class, but we can look at an aspect on that. It doesn't change anything. Uh, where is this thing? Value, 
encourage all this vital value. Uh -huh. So we'll be doing calculation uh, like nine. Uh, I did here for the cumulative data from what uh, important to us. Okay. Yeah, so I'm going to share my screen on the the next topic. Okay, you listen and then you ask questions. As relevant. Measures of central tendency. Okay, uh, what we call as measures of central location. Okay. So I have it here as topic four, but it's topic two for you in your course. Okay, this this statistic course is for another program but you are engineers so we move straight to measures of central tendencies okay so for you that is topic two measures of central tendency are very important to us as scientists okay to know exactly what is happening in a particular process okay and uh, some of the key measures of central tendencies that are used practically are the mean, the median, the mode, and uh, the quartiles. Okay, for us as scientists, we use the quartiles a number of times. And we use them in various fields, even in manufacturing processes, okay, for the estimation of uh, quality control limits, and uh, in so many other areas, okay, for analysis. Very good. So we want to begin with this topic. Um, he says, at the end of this topic, we should be able to explain the concept of the measure of central tendency in the, in the description of data distribution, obtain the mean, median, mode, quantiles, then the state empirical relationship between mean, median, and mode, Okay, then we also calculate the interquartile range, estimate the mean qu and quartile from what uh, the CDF or the cumulative distributions. Good. So basically, when we talk about a measure of central tendency, then we are talking about measures or statistics which describe what is happening in the center of the data. Okay, we are talking about statistics which describe what happens in the center of what a, a distribution, okay, or what you call as data, okay? So for a very simple example, if I want to describe maybe the performance of my former class uh, in, in the course, I could easily say that, oh, uh, a lot of people scored 80 over 100. Uh, when I say a lot of people scored 80 over 100, it gives the impression, it tells anyone, the listener, that people really performed well, okay? Now, that measure or that statistics, a lot of people, is what we refer to as the mode of the data. Mm -hmm. The highest occurring what? observation is the mode of the data. I could have also said that averagely you did well. Uh, averagely people scored around 60 over 100. Uh, 60 over 100 we know is above 50 percent which is the expected what center value. So if you say averagely somebody scored a class called 60 over 100 then it also gives an impression the class did well, okay? So from these two examples, we can clearly see that measures of central tendency help us to describe how a distribution looks like or what is happening in the distribution. Okay, and as part of our objectives for today, we, we're going to look at how to calculate the mean, the median, the mode, and the quartiles for ungrouped data and for group data. Now, um, we know from previous class what is what on group data is and what group data is, okay? For group data, you have the data like nine, 
10, then I give you 11, okay, 20, and I ask you to group them. Huh? So you have a number of observations. But for group data, they're already in the class limits. You have the class limits, okay, with the frequencies. Uh, so I give you maybe 1 to uh, 11. Then I have um, 12, okay, 12 to, uh, that will be 10. So that's 22, okay. Then we have, are you getting it? So 23 to uh, 30, 33, okay. Good. Then I have the frequency. So this is grouped data. Whilst the other data that is ungrouped. Uh, so we'll be doing calculation for ungrouped. Then when we are done, we also do the calculation for grouped data. Good. Okay. So there is something I almost skipped in the slide I gave to you. So I want to quickly go back to your slide. Okay, and then we look at that. Then we can, okay. So in the slide I sent to you, okay. Yeah, we're talking about data description. Okay, data description. So we've looked at the type of data and uh, we need to, we said statistic is also in two folds, that is descriptive statistics and inferential statistics. Now, when we talk about describing data, then we are talking about what? Descriptive or stats, uh, description, description, okay? Good. And that aspect of description is what, uh, which I'm referring to is the presenting of the data in an informative way. So after you've, you've taken your data, you've collected the data, uh, you try to organize, and then you try to present, okay? So the presentation aspect is where you actually describe the data. So it's more like you are talking about the data. How does the data look like, okay? How does it look like? Where are the peaks? Where are the low? What is the average? What is the variation in the data? Okay, so when we talk about data description or describing data, there are three key things we usually talk about. Okay, the first one is the shape of the distribution of the data. We want to see the shape of the distribution of the data. The second thing is the measures of central tendency, which we'll be looking at in our next lecture. And then the final thing you talk about are the measures of variation or variation in the data. Okay, so shape of the distribution, measures of central tendency, and then the measures of variation or the variation in the data. And then when it comes to the shape of the distribution, okay, there are a number of parameters that we calculate. As long as we are looking at classical techniques, we, we try and calculate some uh, quantities, okay? Quantities from the data to try and describe 